In this video, I will show you how to use Insta360 Studio for One X to make a video like this. To follow along this tutorial, please download the Insta360 One X sample footage in the video description. Once you've got that, let's get started. Go to the folder with your One X INSV video files. When you film in 5.7K, there are two video files for each 360 video. One video is for the back lens and one video is for the front lens, so never split these files up. When you import one or both of the INSV files into Studio for One X, the software will automatically stitch the front and back video together into a single 360 video. To reframe your 360 video into a 2D video, head over to the free capture mode. The first thing you need to do is pick an aspect ratio for your video. You need to know what your canvas will look like before you start editing the video. If you want to make a video for YouTube then leave the aspect ratio as 16 by 9. If you want to make a video for your Instagram or Facebook story then select 9 by 16. And finally if you want to make a video for your Instagram feed then select 1 by 1. Unfortunately there is no 4 by 5 aspect ratio yet for tall Instagram videos. In this example, I'll work in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio for YouTube. Click here to zoom out the timeline so you can see the entire video clip. The next step is to trim the video to your desired length. This yellow box is your video clip. You can drag the start and end points of the video inwards to trim it shorter. And you can drag it back out again to make it longer. I want the video to be 15 seconds long. And I want to start the video 5 seconds into this clip. I will drag the starting point just before 5 seconds and I'll drag the end point to just after 20 seconds. Now the duration of this video clip is roughly 15 seconds long and it is ready to be edited. The next step is to add keyframes to animate your video. A keyframe is basically a way to tell the software this is what I want the video to look like at this point in time. Let's tell the software what we want the video to look like at the beginning of our video clip. Drag the grey line towards the beginning of your video. Click the yellow button to add a keyframe. You will get a bunch of options. The first option is timestamp. Here you can jump to a precise minute and second of your video. The pan angle turns your video left and right. The tilt angle makes your video go up and down. The field of view zooms in and out and distance changes the look of the video from a sphere into a 2D flat video. Here you can jump to a fisheye view and it will automatically configure these settings for you. Click here for a tiny planet view, a sphere view, or a regular 2D camera view. You can use your mouse to drag and adjust the video as you like as well. Now I want to make the video start exactly at 5 seconds. Next to timestamp there are two options, one for minutes and one for seconds. I will change this value to exactly 5 seconds. Drag the in point towards the first keyframe and this will make sure the video starts at exactly 5 seconds. I want to start the video as a tiny planet so I will click the tiny planet button. I will drag the video to make some adjustments and I will zoom out to keep all of the tiny planet in shot. I like to keep the video moving at all times to keep it interesting. In the next second I want the video to zoom in on the tiny planet. I will move the grey line to the 6th second and add a keyframe. I will tidy up this timestamp to make sure it is exactly 6 seconds. If you remember, I said field of view is the same thing as zooming in and out, so decrease the field of view to zoom in. Now I want the video to zoom out before turning the video from a tiny planet to a normal video view. Move the grey line to the 7th second, add a keyframe, change the timestamp to exactly 7 seconds, zoom the video out by increasing the field of view. Now 2 seconds later I want to change the video from a tiny planet view to a normal video view. So move the grey line towards the 9th second, add a keyframe, change the timestamp to exactly 9 seconds, click the fisheye button and it will give you a good starting point. I will drag the video to make some adjustments. Let's just do a quick recap of what we have done so far. I started the video as a little planet, a second later it zooms in a little bit, a second after it zooms out a little bit, 2 seconds later it turns into a normal video. To play back what you have so far, click the go to trim start button and click play. The video will only play between the in and out points. This is why I trim the video early in the editing process, 
so I can just play back the video I am going to export. Now I'm going to pan this 360 scene towards the left for the next 6 seconds so the viewers can take in the view. So move the grey line 6 seconds forward to the 15th second. Add a keyframe, change the timestamp to exactly 15 seconds. I'm going to drag the video left up until here. After the video pan, I will turn the video back into a tiny planet again. So move the grey line towards the 16th second, add a keyframe, change the timestamp to exactly 16 seconds. Click the tiny planet button, drag the tiny planet into place. I will zoom it out to make it feel like the planet is really heavy. Now I will create a zoom in for the tiny planet so the viewers can see it properly. I will add a keyframe 2 seconds later at the 18th second. Change the timestamp to exactly 18 seconds. And I will zoom in the tiny planet by decreasing the field of view. The last 2 seconds will stay the same to end the video. This will give the viewers a quick glance at the tiny planet before the video ends. Add a keyframe towards the end of the video. Change the timestamp to exactly 20 seconds. Drag the end point of the video inwards towards the keyframe. This will make sure the video ends exactly at the 20th second. Let's see what we have so far. Click the go to trim start button and click play. The next step is to add transitions. Transitions are the lines in between the keyframes. The software knows what you want the video to look like at these different times. But now you need to tell the software how you would like to move from one keyframe to another. I will add a fade in fade out transition on the line after the keyframe at 15 seconds. And on the next line, I will add a slip in slip out transition. And this is the final result. Now you are ready to export your video. Click the export button. Save the changes. The resolution 1920 by 1080 is fine for YouTube. Leave the bitrate as 18 megabits per second. Choose a file name and a folder where you want to save it and click OK to begin exporting. Once you have finished exporting your video, you can now share your video on social media or you can continue editing your video in your favorite video editor. Then you can color grade the video by adding the 1x slot. Add music. or even crop the video into a 4x5 aspect ratio for Instagram. Just create a new sequence, 864x1080. And import your video into this sequence. And then export your video. Make sure to leave export video and export audio checked. Scroll down and select VBR2 pass. Change the minimum bitrate to 16 megabits per second and click export. And that's it. You now know how to make videos using Insta360 Studio for One X. Feel free to share your videos on the How To Make A Video Facebook group. I look forward to seeing them.